Welcome, this is Torsten from Ziklag Productions teaming up with Vespers and Warp Academy to bring you a new tutorial. If this is our first time meeting, feel free to check out my profile on warpacademy.com. Today, we will be dipping into some advanced signal processing with Isotope's Neutron, so let's take a look. Any mix engineer worth their salt will tell you placing a kick and bass in a mix can be one of the most tedious and arduous events during the mixing process. And this phase is latent with unending compromises while both instruments try to dominate the low frequencies of a mix. Let's take a listen to a track that we will be working with today. But before we do, please note that this is considered an advanced mixing technique. So I massively recommend that you view this video in a proper listening environment with acoustic treatment and studio monitors, or at a minimum, a great set of headphones. We have made this entire live set available to you as a free download. There is a link to that in the description. So make sure you do pick up a demo of Neutron and play with this exact live set and get the results I am getting. This of course allows you to follow along without ever feeling stuck. During the first four beats, we will be hearing how the kick is robust and drives the track forward, but with the introduction of the bass, it loses the majority of its definition. Let's take another listen without the distraction of the high frequencies in this track, and we'll observe more easily how the sub competes so aggressively for that low frequency dominance that the kick loses its intended priority almost entirely. Here's that same track after being processed by Isotope's Neutron using today's advanced mixing technique. Let's engage the EQ again so we can hear what's going on in the lower frequencies. In both instances, we observe that the sub is now attenuating each time the kick hits, and this delivers that dominance back over to the kick like we were looking for, so that the kick can drive the dance floor with adequate low-end pressure. It's absolutely pivotal that I highlight the melodic nature of this bass. It actually has a lot of high-end frequencies, and this is important because the technique I'm showing you is only a game changer if we need to maintain other sonic characteristics of the bass instrument itself. Let's briefly discuss how traditional mixing options fall short. Likely your knee-jerk, and definitely mine, is to sidechain compress. This is the failsafe for most of the EDM world, right? But when we are using a bass to tell a melodic story, interruption of that story from the compressor can be massively detrimental. So take a listen to what that would sound like. So that failed dramatically. What other options do we have? Well, we could EQ a little notch for the kick to shine through. Let's take a listen to what that might sound like. The EQ masterfully isolated our problem frequencies. The problem is we permanently lost those frequencies. So anytime the bass tries to play in that frequency range, the sub disappears entirely. The compressor achieves a momentary change in the audio. However, even subtle compression unacceptably alters the entire frequency spectrum. Therefore, the melodic emotional line that the bass is trying to convey is lost. It's very probable you see where I'm going with this already. What if we had an EQ band that could cut, but only when the kick hits? This is one of my favorite features that Neutron facilitates. So let's take a look at how we can set this up using Ableton Live as our host. The setup is pretty quick, but dialing the right settings can take a little bit of tweaking, so I'll offer some tips that I've discovered along the way to make the process more efficient. Let's navigate to the browser, then to my plugins, and of course to Neutron, which in this case is in my VSTs. Uh, I'm going to drop this straight onto the kick, and after Neutron loads, I will name this instance of Neutron 
kick. It will become apparent why this is an important step shortly. Next, I am going to drop an instance of Neutron onto the base. Note that I am not making any changes. I want to leave it in its default settings so that it's doing nothing to the track. I want it to be completely harmless, if you will. This video is not intended to be a tour of Neutron, and therefore we will not look at the 99% of the other awesome things Neutron does. Everything we are doing takes place in the EQ module. For our second step, we want to assess where masking is taking place. So I'm going to click the masking button, which allows me to visually see where two tracks are colliding in the sonic spectrum. Therefore, I'm going to click here and select kick. Oh, that's why he named it previously. Yes, that is why. I have turned down the volume of the track in post so that you can visually see what is happening while the track rolls. And here is where the masking is taking place. We can clear this section by clicking the red exclamation point or by clicking any of the nodes individually. This is useful because now I can make changes and manually reset to see that those changes have had an impact. We, of course, have completely destroyed the low frequency like we did with the EQ before, but we have eliminated the masking. However, I will leave this frequency band in this position because it's a good starting point for when I turn on dynamic mode. To do so, I click the toggle here, and now I can see a variety of other controls, including the dynamic EQ mode switch here. I turn it on, but we see that it's only interacting with internal audio. It's the bass itself that is triggering the response of the dynamic EQ. We obviously need to turn on this sidechain option. It still sounds exactly the same because the sidechain band we have selected is internal. We want to select external, and now it's doing nothing. That's because in Ableton Live, you need to route audio to this device. It's very simple to do. And that leads us to step three, which is creating a new track to exist as an auxiliary bus. We are going to pull signal from the kick and route it straight in to Neutron. So first we create a new track and we go to the input section of the track and we choose the drum kit. And here for the channel, we specifically want the kick drum and I want the kick drum pre-effects because I don't want any additional processing I do later on to change the interaction between the kick and the bass. Next, we set monitoring to in so that this is constantly sending signal regardless of the state of the record button below. And we need to select our bass as the output and our channel already defaults to Neutron, which is great, but I highlight this because if you have other plugins that can receive a sidechain input, you will need to specify to which plugin you're sending your audio. As a personal preference, I change the color to match my kick drum so that I see they correspond with one another, and I remove all of the stop buttons so that I clearly see this is not a channel for holding audio clips, but instead is acting as an auxiliary bus. And upon opening our base instance of Neutron, we see that the kick is in fact influencing the dynamic EQ. The kick is definitely starting to shine through and our track is starting to take shape, but the release is a little bit sluggish. So let's see what we can do to tighten that up a bit. First, from within Neutron itself, I can actually choose a different frequency band to assess the incoming audio through. Let's use band eight as an example. I am going to turn the band on so that we can drag it through the audio spectrum. And I'm going to place it all the way up at the top here so that it is in the most neutral position when assessing the kick. There's not a lot going on in the audio spectrum up here. When we return to the low shelf, we see that it is responding much less than previously. That's because the incoming signal is now being filtered through band eight and then is triggering the dynamic EQ. This can be really, really helpful. And I'm gonna move band eight to somewhere more useful where there's a lot of pressure in the kick. Let's go back to our low shelf. We see that we now, there you go. We have a lot more uh, of a response in our dynamic EQ. 
This is a very powerful feature, but I can't hear how I'm influencing that input signal. So I have another solution that I use. Let's place this back to external full. And let's drop an instance of EQ3 on our sidechain track. To hear what's inside of our sidechain track, we are going to give full volume to the auxiliary send. On the corresponding return, we will delete any defaulted effects we find there and turn it off so we only hear what's being sent when we click solo. Now we can hear the sound that we are honing and is responsible for activating the dynamic EQ. Now we have a much tighter transient because we eliminated the lows and boosted some of the mids. Let's take a look at what our dynamic EQ is doing. We see that it does respond strongly to this new signal, but it quickly gets out of the way. We have a very quick release now, which is exactly what I was looking for. As soon as the kick begins to resolve, the bass is reincorporated back into the low end of the piece, and we don't feel that pumping and breathing quite as much as we did previously. Let's take a listen to that one last time. Very nice. The kick is punchy and the bass has not lost any of its characteristic sound in the process. And this is hugely pivotal for any genres that use the bass for any storytelling mechanic like drum and bass, mini house tracks like this one. Truthfully, almost any genre could benefit from the use of this technique. Admittedly, mastering these principles can be a bit of a challenge, so we have made this entire live set available to you as a free download. The link is in the description. Plus, it includes a variety of samples from the Leviathan Sample Library by Black Octopus and an exclusive bass instrument I put together specifically for this tutorial, which incidentally is only available through this video. <laughs> the Leviathan Pack, on the other hand, is available through the Warp Academy shop. This has been Torsen of Ziglag Productions, partnering with Warp Academy to show you some advanced signal processing with Isotopes Neutron. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, like, subscribe, and share so we can see you in our future videos.